ready? Everybody alert? Heads up. Hello, greetings. Greetings, greetings. greetings, fellow Nebraskans, and welcome to this citizen hearing. Thank you for coming. Power to the people. We already have a pipeline through this state, and we already know that it wasn't done right, and the leaks in North Dakota proved that. TransCanada didn't do it right the first time. Why would we let them do it again? And it's easy for us to point fingers at TransCanada for not doing it right the first time, but we didn't do it right the first time either. Those people in that room didn't do it right, and we didn't do it right, and the people of this state allowed it to happen. And we have a chance to not allow this to happen again. We have a chance to create a boundary that we need. All through the southwest part of Holt County, where the Keystone XL pipeline is proposed to cross, the water is at or near the surface. I planted a tree on our acreage, our 40 acres, last spring, and I was only down a couple feet and water was filling the hole. That's the Ogallala Aquifer water saturated that high. All through that part of Holt County where the pipeline will be, it'll be submerged in the waters of the aquifer. Is there anything on this earth that people will not destroy or put at risk just to make a profit? I mean, is that, is that the bottom line for us? Now, it seems to me that in our nation, we have a double standard. We have two sets of rules. We've got one for the ordinary citizen. And we've got another rule for the powerful and the rich. Actually, there is only one set of rules, and that's for the ordinary citizen and the big and the powerful. They have none or else they make up the ones they want. I want to voice our protection rights for us as landowners against pipeline companies. My father, mother, and I have been harassed by TransCanada and their land agents. Helicopters have flown over and spooked our cattle through fences. We've had numerous phone calls and visits threatening eminent domain and court proceedings and a final draft statement sent by FedEx on April 7th has left us drained emotionally about our future of ranching and protecting our land and water. I'm truly scared of the thought of any possible leak on the Sand Hills region and our ranch. How would we even clean up the cancer-causing agents that are mixed with the water? If I want to go down and spray some weeds by the creek, I have to get a special permit from the EPA. But at the same time, it appears that TransCanada will be able to bury a pipeline carrying oil and poisonous chemicals such as benzene, a known carcinogen, directly in the groundwater <clears throat> without any state safety regulations or emergency plans in place. The static water level at my place, as shown in the USGS report, is six feet seven inches. That's not very deep till you hit water. The pipeline company says it will be using all necessary safeguards, but isn't that what BP said before they blew out the oil well in, in the Gulf of Mexico? My ranch has been in a family for over 100 years. And in the 1920s, a huge prairie fire went through our area. My granddad hitched up his team of horses, took the one bottom plow, and plowed what they called a fire break to try to help stop it. Now, a fire break is about four feet wide. And in the last 100 years, with the conservation efforts of, of my granddad, my dad, and continuing to myself and my son, I hope, this fire break has never healed. It still blows every spring when it's dry. I go down, I put hay on it, I feed on it, I seed on it. Baby grass comes up, the wind comes up, the sand goes away. The Ogallala Aquifer, in my opinion, is white gold, more precious than oil. It is also a national treasure. The pipeline should not cross millions of people's water supply. Is this your friendly neighborhood pipeline company? We're the citizens, this is what we want. We don't want a TransCanada to control our fate, our water, our resources. That's not what we're about. The risks for this project are known, and they are real. The benefits are speculative, at best. The TransCanada permit application indicates that a leak 
rate of less than 1.5 percent could go unnoticed for 90 days. That translates into 372,000 gallons per day that could be leaked directly into the groundwater before they would know it. At a pipeline informational meeting we held in Stewart April 17th, we had 150 people there. Not one of those people spoke up for the pipeline. And considering Stewart is only a population of 650 people, to me that is telling. The landowners and the farmers and ranchers that we represent uh, across the state are being are, are blowing in the wind and, and being put at risk because we can't address simple, basic, fundamental issues of liability, of financial assurance, of the proper use of eminent domain. Uh, we have failed uh, to provide dispute resolution, and as a state, we have failed to step up to the plate and do anything to assume our responsibilities to help provide guidance relative to the routing and siting of this pipeline. We, as a state, have failed to protect our state's primary economic and environmental interests, not to mention the interests of private property. I think it's time we heard from all of you. And haven't you told children, grandchildren, others for whom you feel responsible, if they are approached by strangers saying, would like to ride my Cadillac, it's full of candy and soda and comics books, what do you tell them? Just say no! And I sincerely hope that, that we can get some protection for our fragile sand hills and all of the people nationwide that drink from our aquifer. I think that's our last hope is to um, lobby to get in the faces of our officials and say we don't want this and what does it take for you to listen to us? As a businesswoman of rarity in the sand hills, I would not allow my children or any hired help near a contaminated site. I know life happens and as a rancher we must always prepare prepare and be thinking ahead of the game of life. I do not want this pipeline built here or anywhere else, period. I am now asking you to help us in case life doesn't go my way. And they're going to open up the sand hills like you're gutting a catfish on Saturday night. They're going to stick a pipe in our water supply that will pump between 30 and 40 million gallons per day through our state, every day. It's, it's, you can't even comprehend. Not if we can stop them. That's right. Not if we can stop them. So, I guess in closing, we need to wake up here, and our leaders need to wake up and take some action. Because I'll guarantee you, this will not be the last pipeline. If we let this one come through, we're open the floodgate. There's acres and acres of that tar sands up there. And there's lots of oil companies just waiting to cash in on it. So let's do all we can to stop this thing. We're about to enter into a long-term relationship with a foreign corporation. They're going to put something in our earth that is going to be there forever. You don't enter into a long-term relationship and base it on short-term economic gain. When you enter a long-term relationship with someone or something, you base it on respect and honesty and trust and accountability and compassion and we have not seen any of those things from Trans Canada. I'm just here to say that I won't allow this to happen in the Sand Hills. I won't allow this to happen in the state of Nebraska. I'm going to do something about this and I hope you all do too. Thank you. <laughs>